Thank you. Uh, my name is James Slaw, and I want to thank the House Oversight Committee and Chairwoman Carolyn Maloney for allowing me to share my story today. I want to start with my coming out story, as it involves my family, their support, and in the beginning, homophobia. My sister Charlene actually helped pave the way for me to come out, for me to feel safe. Uh, she was forced out of the closet by our mother and ultimately forced out of the house. Um, when she was, our household went through a transformation. In the end, after a long process of learning and understanding, our mother chose her children and accepted who we are. It was this road that allowed me to feel safe enough at 24 years old to say, hey mom, I like guys, in a conversation. She recently passed away, but before she died, for the past 15 years, she became an advocate for our community. She chose love, and love will win in the end. Um, and this goes especially in her religious circles who dehumanized us. The events of November 19th were a nightmare come true and one of my biggest fears. Right before midnight on the eve of the transgender day of remembrance, my boyfriend John Carlos and I were about to leave Club Q when a shooter walked in. Several pops rang out and I immediately felt a searing pain in my arm. I fell over on the ground knowing I had been shot in my right arm. It wasn't working, but I was able to call 911. I saw everyone on the ground, glass panes shattered and blood running from my arm and chest where shrapnel had come through. John Carlos was next to me, shot in the leg, but thankfully alive. To my horror, my sister Charlene was bleeding out. She had been shot over five times. My heart rended as uh, she tried to dial 911 with her good arm outstretched. I called out to her and I heard no response. I don't want to imagine what may happen had the shooter not been taken down that night. Five wonderful people were still murdered and may we never forget their names. Ashley Paw, Raymond Green Vance, Daniel Aston, Derek Rump, and Kelly Loving. We miss each of you. Club Q was a second home and safe space, not just for me, but for all of us. Outside of these spaces, we are continually being dehumanized, marginalized, and targeted. The fear-based and hateful rhetoric surrounding the LGBTQ plus community, especially around trans individuals and drag performers, leads to violence. It incites violence. We shouldn't have to fear being shot when we go to our safe spaces, or anywhere for that matter. It was only after this violation of our safe space that I came to realize, though, we have a lot more love in this world. Before sunrise, we were already receiving messages from all over the world with affirmations of love. People who have, we have never met giving us their best wishes. A family friend immediately started a GoFundMe and we've experienced a ton of support. When I left the hospital, I was brought to tears just by the memorial that had been created in front of the club, in front of my safe space. I, would, I want to thank the Colorado Victims Advocates who have been instrumental in our recovery and helping with funds, and of course, the staff at GLAD who have simply been amazing in helping me use my voice. Hate rhetoric from politicians, religious leaders, and media outlets is at the root of the attacks like at Club Cute, and it needs to stop now. Rhetoric that makes people less than for being different. Rhetoric that threatens to silence what sports we can play, what bathrooms we can use, how we define our family, and who I can marry. Every American, every American, especially those elected to positions of power, has a responsibility and a choice to use their words consciously. Hate starts with speech. The hateful rhetoric you've heard from elected leaders in the, is the direct cause of the horrific shooting at Club Q. We need elected leaders to demonstrate language that reflects love and understanding, not hate and fear. I urge LGBTQ plus Americans and allies to join together today as, our, as one community. Hateful people want to drive us back into closets and to live our lives in fear, but we cannot be afraid. 
No bullets will stop us from being proud of who we are or will injure the support and love that exists in our community. Thank you.